I'm here with Josh Portlock from Electro Adventures and these guys have been doing some amazing work in the space of electrification for like aqua marine craft. So Josh, thanks for coming along. Yeah, thanks Chris, always a pleasure to be on your show. Yeah, now look, this morning I had a heck of a lot of fun with the aqua flyer, so yeah, yeah. thanks for the opportunity. Oh, I'm glad you enjoyed it. Uh, yeah, um, so tell me, What's been going on? Because we're seeing the wave fly. Sure. What else have you got? It. So Aquaflights is really the B to C of electric hydrofoiling. So we have the e-foil surfboards, the e-foil scooters now that you experienced this morning, mm. which is a bit more accessible for the masses uh, with a handlebar. And then eventually we'll be offering the wave flyer for, through Aquaflights as an like half hourly hourly rental. So that way people can experience it affordably without mm. having to you know front up the whole price tag. All right. Awesome. And uh, so. Where do you see the company in like six months to a year from now? Yeah, well next year we'll be in full swing production with the Wayflower. We've already got 147 reservations for it, so Fantastic. we've really got to get on with building now. Yeah. Um, that's since just March from the Fleet Charge Live where you last did uh, footage yeah. covering it. So yeah, it's just really been organically growing. One of our videos has had like four and a half million views. We've Whoa. had a lot of uh, you know, a lot of coverage um, that's really blown up, which is great. So now we're just organically getting more and more reservations. Yeah. So production's a high priority, and then getting it into those shared uh, fleets with Aquaflights and the franchise model is allowing to scale throughout Australia to offer this experience. Awesome. Mm. Behind us, we've got something rather unique. Can you tell us about it? It is. So the Cyber Trailer was an idea of uh, really bringing energy with you aerodynamically. So you know, you can easily chuck a bunch of solar on a box trailer but it's going to add so much drag to the vehicle when you're moving it around that that was a sort of compromise that yes you're bringing energy with you but you've consumed a lot of energy to get it there yeah. and the other aspect is that you don't often have power where you're going to operate these electric watercraft so you really want to have your own power station mm. so by folding out the solar this way and actually aerodynamically streamlining the trailer like a cyber truck hence the name yeah. the cyber trailer gets you that low drag streamlining to get somewhere mm -hmm. and then once you've unfolded it you've got a really efficient large solar array to charge your electric uh, watercraft fantastic oh my gosh so what's the actual solar uh, this power one this? this can be up to three kilowatts yeah. this particular one's about two kilowatts because we've actually used used panels uh -huh. so we intentionally uh, took uh, used panels and assembled the first prototype to prove that we could actually use the recycled economy of yeah. panels that maybe aren't as efficient as anymore but they're basically free when people take them off their homes to upgrade so you can make cyber trailers out of them Fantastic. so it's really good reuse of that uh, yeah. solar energy because two kilowatts is plenty to charge the e fall surfboards right. so we didn't actually need a, a huge array yeah. but if they're also structural and aerodynamic and closing everything up it's kind of a win-win gotcha yeah. and We've got a battery in there as well? We do. We've got 10 kilowatt hours of battery buffer in there. Yeah. So even if the sun's not shining all day, we can still charge these you know, one to two kilowatt hour e fall surfboard batteries about five to ten times cool. um, before even needing more sun. So appreciating that, you know, look, no matter what you drive, petrol, diesel or electric, mm. when you tow, you have a sacrifice of range. Yeah. Have you got hub motors in this or anything? That is in the roadmap, but there is a cost penalty and weight penalty we have to factor in. Yeah. We're trying to keep under the uh, sort of weight limits of most towable vehicles, especially EVs, so yeah. you might want to say under 750 kilos for say um, the BYDs and whatnot, mm. ton for, one ton for the Model 3s. So things like that, by staying lightweight and not having the hub motors, we, we mean we're more accessible for many EVs to tow it. Yeah. The main aerodynamic benefit of having the streamlining is that you're not adding drag to the car. That's so it. in fact, if you were a van or a truck or SUV, it actually reduces drag of the combined system. So okay. you're actually getting better range by towing this than not. Yeah. A, and a slick car like a Model 3, it's probably comparable range. You're sort okay. of not losing as much as a box trailer. Sure. Um, but yeah, you still don't want to be dragging around that big uh, buff body at the back. Yeah. Hub motors are definitely in the road map for development. Yep. Uh, for larger commercial applications where we have to carry a lot more batteries in the sort of one to two ton range, yeah. then we'd use the hub motors to help accelerate and decelerate and regen just as all EVs benefit from regen. Yeah. Yeah. We want our trailer to benefit from regen as well and not waste that energy on, on, on uh, braking. Excellent. All right, well, look, thanks so much. We've got yeah. some really exciting stuff here. And Josh, thanks for coming on. Cheers, Chris. Look Thank forward you. to yeah, Links are below. Yeah.